What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell, excited to bring y'all another birds opening video. And in the first video, we went over this reverse Dutch-like system and how white can best develop to reach an optimal middle game position. In today's video, we will go over how to best respond to the Fromm's Gambit with E5. Absolutely crazy move. And here black is not hiding its intentions to crush the bird's opening and win the game quickly. And black has actually had good success with this, but when prepared, white can reach a clearly better position. And before I show you guys, I thought I'd briefly ask y'all if you'd consider subscribing to this channel and maybe even hitting the bell if you enjoy chess content. I enjoy making chess content and would love to make more, so your support is much appreciated. Going back to the best response against the Fromm's Gambit, here white needs to take on e5. Now, e4 going into the king's gambit is also an option. However, I simply think that f takes e5 is much better. Now in the Fromm's gambit, 95 plus percent of the time, you're gonna see black play d6. And here is where the big decision arises. Do we take on d6 or do we play knight f3? Now, I personally, really like the move e takes d6. And I think a lot of white players are scared of playing this move because after bishop takes d6, both the bishop and the queen are very active here and white does need to be careful. Let's just say white plays a move like knight c3. Well, with a move like knight c3, the h4 square is open and now we see queen h4 check and all of a sudden here black can take with the queen or the bishop, but in either case, White loses the game in six moves. So following bishop takes d6, here white can't just play a move like b3 or knight c3, but has to play the move knight f3. Naturally developing the knight and defending that h4 square. And most of the time what you're going to see here from the Fromm's Gambit is g5, a very aggressive move looking to expand on the king side of the board and kick that knight out of the f3 square. A lot of white players here may be tempted to play h3 to help slow down this g4 idea, but the problem now is bishop g3 is checkmate and now white loses the game in five moves. So the key idea here that you need to remember is g3. We play g3 and following g4 we now have knight h4. Now we see the reason behind g3. It defends the h4 square, and it also creates some space later on for the bishop on f1 to fianchetto on a very nice diagonal. So here the best move for black is knight e7, and now we just continue to develop with knight c3. d4 is the most popular option, but white performs much better with knight c3, because after knight g6, we now have knight takes g6, and following h takes g6, now black is threatening to play bishop takes g3 with check. The idea being, after h takes g3, we lose a rook on h1. So what do we do here? We now use our knight on c3 and play knight e4, attacking the bishop on d6 while defending the pawn on g3, and following a move like bishop f5, we can simply trade down, play a move like d3, and after knight c6 and bishop g2, here white is up a pawn and I think has a clear advantage. Future moves could include castling kingside, bishop f4 attacking the queen, e4 attacking the bishop on f5, here white is up a pawn, and I just don't think black has enough firepower to get that pawn back. So as you guys know, I prefer the move e takes d6, but many of you might prefer the move knight f3, trying to give the pawn back and following d takes e5, playing e4. Now, following e4, white would love to play a move like bishop c4, castle kingside, and really put some pressure on that f7 pawn. But most of the time here, black will play the nice move, bishop c5, looking to penetrate the a7, g1 diagonal, not allowing the white king to castle. 
So here we play C3. And honestly, this line kind of reminds me of the Gyoko piano. We play C3, preparing to play D4. And following knight F6, we now have another big decision, either snatching the pawn on E5 or playing D4. Now, I personally prefer snatching the pawn, but let's go over D4. After D4, we now have E takes D4, C takes D4, Bishop B4 check. As you guys can see, this is very similar to the main line of the Gyoko piano. We now have Bishop D2, the bishops trade off, and following castles, we have Bishop D3, and following Knight C6, now playing Queen A4, looking to defend the pawn on D4. And here, at first sight, it appears as if white has a clear advantage. But the reason I don't like this line very much is the move knight takes d4. What is black doing? Well, after knight takes d4, we now win a piece with queen takes d4. And following queen takes d4 and knight takes d4, now white is up a piece for a pawn, but rook d8 comes into play. And with rook d8 attacking the knight on d4, on top of c5 ideas, there's no way for white to hold on to the knight here. And I would say that this position is roughly even, maybe a slight advantage to white. I personally don't like it very much, but to each its own, some players really like this position with the white pieces. Now, as I mentioned, the move I prefer personally is knight takes e5, snatching the pawn, and following queen e7, attacking the knight on e5, we can now play d4, and following bishop d6, knight f3, and after knight takes e4, just play bishop e2, and after castles, just castle here, and I think white has a slightly better position here. Let's just say a move like c5 is played. We can now play a move like rook e1, bishop d3, even d5 is an option. White has a lot of flexibility here, and I like white's game. So guys, that wraps up how to best respond to the Fromm's Gambit. I thank y'all for tuning in, and I'm wishing you guys a great day. Peace. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. And I've got a lot more high-quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.